Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, we will learn how to identify the presence of skeletal pneumaticity in the various fossil archosauromorpha and how this relates to a new style of respiration. Take a deep breath in, hold it, breathe out. We are mammals. And our breathing is basically filling our lungs with oxygenated air and then breathing out through our nose and our mouth. The opening into our lungs is formed by our trachea, a narrow path into our lungs that air must go back and forth through this simple tube. And it's an okay system. But early archosauromorphs were the first group of tetrapods to expand on this style of respiration. What if you could store oxygenated air within your body so that you could hold your breath longer, or better yet, provide a continuous source of oxygenated air into your lungs? You would not have to breathe in all that air and then out all your air Wow, what an ineffective way of breathing. In, out, in, out, in, out. It's exhausting. If you could store, somehow store air in your body, you could become a super breather. The archosauromorphs hacked into the respiratory system by using a network of air sacs or air-filled expansions in the body to store air, creating a system where air is continuously passed into the lungs. A constant flow of oxygenated air entering into the lungs is accomplished by emptying and filling numerous air sacs rather than the lungs themselves. Air sacs are distributed along the body cavity with the expansion of the ribs, the muscles pump air into a bellow system of air sacs, which then more passively circulate that air into the lungs, providing a continuous source of oxygenated air. These air sacs fill the body cavity with the anterior air sacs positioned in close contact with the cervical and thoracic vertebrae invaginations into the bone are found along the centrum. In living birds, the air sac system expands even into the humerus, significantly lightening the bird's body and making the skeleton light enough for flight. Paleontological evidence for pneumaticity in the axial skeleton extends all the way back to the early Triassic Archosauromorpha indicating that an avian style of respiration was likely developed before flight and is found in common with the entire group. Small pits or pneumaticity has been reported for the early Triassic fossil Eurypteosuchus, a larger early Triassic archosauromorph, and is found in numerous dinosaurs and pterosaurs, and it also shows the style of respiration. If this new style of respiration was common in basal archosauromorpha, it's no wonder that flight arose twice in pterosaurs and in birds. Such an avian style of respiration is almost necessary for active flight. Now, there are groups of archosauromorphs that lack pneumaticity and hence lack an avian respiration system. These are the crocodilians and other aquatic archosauromorphs like phytosaurs. If a group returned to living in the water, having air sacs distributed across your body would not be good for swimming. So within these groups, the air sac system was lost. Modern crocodilians and alligators reverted to simply breathing in and out like mammals. They utilize their livers by drawing it caudally with a muscle, although how important this hepanic breathing is has recently been questioned. And it may be that the intercostal muscles 
between the ribs do much of the work in expanding the lungs. Fossil aquatic archosauromorphs don't show much pneumaticity in their bones, and likely had a simple respiration style of breathing. Not all aquatic archosauromorphs lost the avian style of respiration. In aquatic birds, like penguins, which still have an air sac system, and they use them to store air for deep dives. So if pneumaticity in the vertebrae is found in these early Triassic groups, why did crocodilians and phytosaurs lose these air sacs? Or maybe pneumaticity in the vertebra predates the air sac system, which developed later in more advanced archosauromorphs after the split with the cold-blooded crocodilians and possibly warm-blooded pterosaurs, dinosaurs, and birds. So it's important to be able to recognize pneumaticity in the vertebrae in these basal archosauromorphs. They appear as pits or hollowing out of the bone. The vertebra are often complex, facilitating space for these air sacs. All right, you should be able to identify the presence of skeletal pneumaticity in various archosauromorpha and relate that to an avian style of respiration. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin Links are found in the description below.